Hello and a very warm welcome to Public Forum. I'm Amandra Bhatt. Today we talk about RBI's monetary policy review. In keeping with expectations, no RBI rate cut was affected in the monetary policy review today with the status quo retained for key interest rates. RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan did indicate, however, an accommodative stance saying that with inflation moving closer to the target, there would be more room for rate cut to support growth. This was the last monetary policy, remember, before the upcoming annual budget, which will be presented at the end of of this month. Uh, Draguram Rajan also put the onus on the government to maintain fiscal prudence while unveiling the policies in the budget 2016. In the course of next 60 minutes or so, we discuss the key takeaways from the RBI's monetary policy. And to discuss the same, we have with us in the studios an eminent panel. Please welcome Dr. Devendra Kumar Pant. He's a chief economist with India Ratings and Research. Welcome to the program, yep. Dr. Pant. And we're also joined by Dr. Amirullah Khan. Uh, he's also an economist. Welcome to the program, Dr. Khan. Later in the program, we'll be joined by Shubhamoy Bhattacharji, senior journalist. And before we begin the discussion, let's take a look at this report. <laughs> Reserve Bank of India Governor Raghuram Rajan kept key rates, repo rates and cash reserve ratio unchanged in its six bi-monthly monetary policy review. Citing inflationary risk and growth concern, the RBI kept repo rate steady at 6.75% and CRR at 4%. RBI has clearly put the onus on the government to maintain fiscal prudence while unveiling the policies of Union Budget 2016. The RBI governor pegged further easing of monetary policy on the upcoming union budget, saying the structural reforms aimed at boosting growth while controlling spending will give more space to RBI to support growth. Explaining the current monetary policy stance, the RBI governor also expected inflation to be around 5% by March 2017 and that the 7th Pay Commission award had not been factored into these projections. Bureau report, Lok Sabha TV. And RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan also addressed the media today soon after the monetary policy came out. Let's listen in to him. The Reserve Bank continues to be accommodative even as it leaves the policy rate unchanged in this review while awaiting further data on the development of inflation. Structural reforms in the forthcoming union budget that boost growth while controlling spending will create more room for monetary policy to support growth. We're looking into what those mean for what instruments we use. Where it's short-term liquidity needs, we use more the short-term instruments. Where it's long-term liquidity needs, we use open market operations, currency uh, reserve management, and so on. So uh, as I said in the, in the sort of pre-statement to this conference, uh, uh, we will look at the li emerging liquidity needs and use all instruments to manage those. Right, so the RBI clearly in a wait and watch mode ahead of the budget 2016. Uh, Dr. Pan, let me begin the discussion with you. How do you view today's monetary policy? Hardly any surprises there. Well, it was more on the expected line. If you look at the different polls which were conducted by the various uh, new channels and uh, <coughs> electronic media, uh, almost there was a unanimity that there will be no rate cut, neither there will be any cut in the CRR or so. Uh, to take it further, why we were looking at rate cut, uh, basically the argument given for the favor of rate cut that it will spur investment and it will increase growth. Mm. Uh, but even if we look at uh, 125 basis point cut by RBI mm. since January 2015 and corresponding roughly around 60 basis point transmission by the banks we have hardly seen any investment activity taking place or investment activity growth mm. or increasing at a faster uh, faster pace. Uh, the reason being there is surplus capacity in the system. Current demand, if you look at the obicus survey of the RBI which provides capacity utilization data, from last 10 quarters, the capacity utilization is hovering between 70 and 73 percent. Uh, in this time, anybody expect that that cut in, in interest rate will spur investment? Mm. The answer is no. As long as the consumer demand continue to remain strong mm. and that will 
increased capacity utilization level in the economy, hmm. then only we will see the fresh investment started coming in or mm -hmm. the investment demand reviving. Okay, but was a rate cut needed? At as of as of now, no, mm -hmm. because look, the trans monetary transmission takes long time. Mm. Right, it is unlike the fiscal transmission or fiscal impact. Mm. The moment you cut uh, excise oh. duty or increase excise duty, immediately it is it is translated into the prices. Mm -hmm. Monetary transmission impact always felt with a lag, and mm -hmm. at times the lag could be year year and a half. Mm. So what is happening is the past cut hmm. has been giving you some result okay and it would it would have been very bad on the part of any central bank hmm. like today they take a decision and tomorrow they have to take reverse that hmm. the similar thing what is happening in us fed hmm. they have cut they have increased hmm. they have done monetary tightening by 25 basis point hmm. right now the situation of the global economy as well as us economy hmm. is such that if they want even then they will not take back that the, that monetary tightening mm. but the situation requires that the us will continue to follow the accommodative stance the same is here right and the main signal to the rbi will be what kind of fiscal policy government mm. is going to follow in the next budget right what kind of impact that budget proposals are going to have on the demand mm. and what is rbi's assessment that whether it will increase growth hmm. whether it will increase investment or whether it will increase inflation hmm. once those information is available because that is unknown for rbi as yes. of now hmm. so until unless that is available to them hmm. i think it's a best move a best uh, policy hmm. to at this juncture keep right. accommodative hmm. wherever required as he said in 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 in, in his conference hmm. whenever is required if the liquidity injection is required he will mm. they will they will um, uh, inject liquidity in the system right so the ball remains uh, at the moment in the finance ministers yeah. quote uh, uh, dr khan then how how significant is the present monetary policy given the fact that it's all up to the finance minister now all eyes are on the budget yeah you know what what was interesting about the policy and what the governor said uh, beyond the expected which was that there won't be any Uh, loosening there won't be any um, decrease in the cut in the interest rate there won't be any crr decrease what was interesting was the fact that he underlined hmm. the importance of structural reform in the budget you know if you if if people have been following what the governor has been saying he's been very clear on this hmm. one he's absolutely clear that there has to be a control over the fiscal deficit hmm you know what is interesting is and this is what he is telling the finance minister very directly that despite a growing momentum of uh, opinion that fiscal deficits can be loosened up and that this year the finance minister should delay the target by one more year hmm. uh, remember he's already done it last year from 3.6 to 3.9% he is saying no it is not right to do any uh, delay hmm. in getting to back to our fiscal targets and that's an important message he has sent here hmm. he said look as professor pant said you know monetary issues apart what is important that is that we should meet our fiscal targets this year and we should not fall into this hmm. very easy uh, trap of trying to def defray our fiscal deficit this year hmm. because of all the problems that people are saying so that's one very important thing he has said hmm. the second thing that he has said and he said it a couple of times is that look if you look around the world hmm. then our fiscal deficit is really high it is among the highest that uh, exists except for brazil and is constantly showing that if you go the way countries like brazil went then it is downhill all the time hmm. so it's a very strong message and therefore the pressure on the finance minister in this budget hmm. i don't envy him at all is going to be very very high Hmm. he has to ensure that the fiscal target is met hmm. and he has to do something because uh, elections are on in uh, april yes you know five six elections hmm. big elections important ones so therefore the 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 ball as you said hmm. is very difficult is in a very difficult position with the finance minister batting 
Right, but uh, Dr. Pant, as, as we've discussed, it was expected that the RBI governor will wait for cues on fiscal consolidation, uh, you know, to uh, decide on the future course of rate cuts. And he's also hinted at this uh, earlier when he said that any deviation from the fiscal consolidation uh, path is going to hurt the stability of the economy. Uh, but then sticking to the government's fiscal deficit uh, path, it, it seems like a mammoth task ahead of the government. Well, if we talk about this year, hmm. situation is very peculiar hmm. <coughs> and I believe none of us, when I am saying us, the all analytical people in this country, in their wildest dream have assumed that we will see a nominal GDP growth slower than the yeah. real GDP growth. Yeah. Hmm. And that has happened in the second quarter, July, September. Hmm. Now, what has happened because of that, ultimately the taxes are collected on current Days prices. Now, those prices are not growing. We have what? 14 conjugative months of WPA, which is a producer's price mm. deflation. Mm. Mm. Expectations are in the January also, it is likely to remain in the negative territory, mm. although deflation will start slowing down. Mm. Now, if you look, our, our forecast suggests on value terms which is 555,000 crore mm. of the fiscal deficit for this year for the central government, mm. he may have a fiscal deficit of nearly the same amount. Mm. But the problem is because the GDP, nominal GDP, which he assumed in the budget to grow at 11.5%, mm. mm. which chief economic advisor in his mid-year economic review is estimating as 8.2 percent mm. and our forecast suggests somewhere around 9.5 percent. Mm -hmm. Sticking by our forecast, mm. the 3.9 percent may increase to 4.1 percent. Mm -hmm. Now, if you ask me personally whether going from 3.9 to 4.1 will, will create any problem, mm. so small answer is no because what is deficit? You borrow that money in mm. the money market or in the debt market. And the debt market money which is borrowed is absolute level of fiscal deficit, mm -hmm. which according to us mm. is likely to remain same. Mm. Now, after that, when we had this forecast by middle of uh, the, uh, January, post that there is one more excise hike in petrol and diesel. Mm. So, that 3.9 mm. looks closer. Mm. So, instead of 4.1, he may have somewhere around 4.05, okay. 4 mm. but the 3.9 will remain. But the mm. challenge comes for mm. the next year. Okay. Because the oil prices, if, you, if I look at Indian crude basket for mm. the January, that was at $28.35 per barrel, mm. lowest since uh, March 2003. Mm. Now, the chances of that going further down mm -hmm. are low. It may remain around that that uh, that level. Mm. So the incremental excise hike mm -hmm. or the incremental tax collection on that is lower. Mm. Right. Next year, what we are staring at, we are staring at one lakh crore of pay commission. Pay commission. Yes. On top of that, mm. you add first quarter January to March because it will be applicable from January. Mm. So the areas of January to March. Right. Net net, you'll take direct taxes and direct taxes. There is around sixty basis point mm. hit on the budget on the net on the expenditure side. Mm -hmm. But what had come very recently mm. is TRAI's pricing for mm -hmm. 700 and other uh, megahertz, mm -hmm. which the base year price is 4,60,000 crore. Mm. Now, how aggressively mm -hmm. telecom companies will bid for that mm. and how much 20 percent or 30 percent flow in mm. in next fiscal year that will decide on how the fiscal deficit of next year look like. Mm -hmm. Which is 3.5 percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, excluding that, mm -hmm. excluding that, if for a moment we say that the, the telecom auction pricing is not, not there, mm -hmm. our estimate suggests that 3.5 is likely go to 3.9. Mm -hmm. And as Dr. Khan suggested, mm -hmm. last year he has shifted for one year. Mm -hmm. If these windfall gains are not there, mm -hmm. this will be further shifted to one more year. Hmm. Now, the problem with the RBI will be hmm. when as government you are increasing demand, now RBI is now an inflation targeter. Yes. His target is March 2017 uh, 
uh, inflation rate of 5%. 5%. Right. Yeah. right? Hmm. Now, if that is the target which is RBI has, has been given hmm. and inflation is increasing hmm. because some of the factors, hmm. something which is not under control of RBI, hmm. then he has to step in hmm. and pull down that demand. Mm -hmm. So, this is a very peculiar situation and this has been happening in India, it is not new. Mm. RBI is controlling demand by monetary action mm. and FISC, loose FISC is increasing demand. Mm -hmm. So, until unless both move in tandem, mm -hmm. the desired result will not be achieved. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. what Khan. is uh, in addition to what Dr. Pant is saying, the point it might look very facile that 3.9 to 4.05 or 4.1. The point is that over the last couple of years, we have made a huge hue and cry about fiscal deficit targets. Mm -hmm. So much so that we are saying by our own admission that if we do not meet fiscal deficit targets, mm -hmm. then investors will flee. Mm -hmm. It is not the investors who have really said that. They will, they have indicated. But therefore, we have put in a lot of pressure on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We delayed that last year and we s and we f and we confess saying we have delayed it is going to be corrected immediately next mm. year we are sorry for having done mm. it and so now if we do that again even if it is by a percentage point here or there mm. the signal is very critical and that is mm. what Rajan is also saying. Okay. It is coming on top of a year where we have seen net FII outflows mm. that is a situation which is going to be a serious situation that if there is an FII outflow again this year because of such signals, hmm. then it is going to be a even more serious issue. Hmm. The third point is that we are really worried on two counts, two counts on which over the last eight or nine months we have fared pretty badly, which is on the rupee front. Hmm. That is a serious pressure that we are facing because hmm. the rupee has been dropping pretty hmm. badly and the sensex. So, so this time the the finance minister is really being asked to send out very strong signals. Hmm. Last year it was signaling by way of reform measures, by way of passing some laws, hmm. which didn't happen through the year. Right. This year it will be uh, sending out signals by way of where the fiscal deficit target uh, ends. Hmm. And if that is not done, okay. coupled with the fact that we have not been able to move much on the legislative front, hmm. then it is going to be a tough year for the finance minister. Okay, so we will we'll discuss how the government uh, can stick to its fiscal deficit path in greater detail in just a bit. We have to slip into a break right now. Stay with us. We will be right back. Welcome back to Public Forum. We are discussing RBI's Monetary Policy Review. And right now in the program, we are joined by Shubhamoy Bhattacharji, a consulting editor with Business Standard. Welcome to the program, Mr. Bhattacharji. We have been discussing how the RBI's Monetary Policy Review today has been on the expected lines. Key rates have remained unchanged. Uh, uh, what are your views? Yeah. Um the rates are of course the uh, one part of it mm. but i would say that uh, a key part of the rbi's policy is always the statement mm. of what the governor's position is so what is the position on inflation mm. what is the position on uh, going ahead what are the forward looking mm. comments that they that mm. he's making mm. and looking at that uh, one very major uh, comment i would say is that the fact that the gdp uh, expectation mm -hmm is still anchored at 7.4. Hmm. Um, the downward uh, the, uh, the downward revision that they are talking about is also not their inflation. Hmm. So, the inflation is also anchored mm -hmm. saying that we uh, hope to scare, keep it within the 6 percent. Hmm. So, the language there has not changed hmm. both for GDP as well as for inflation. So, that would mean that the RBI's projection of what is happening in the economy hmm. is more or less in tune with what it had sort of estimated yes. last time around. Hmm. So, uh, you would see that the, 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 the continuation of the trend hmm. is, is there. Mm -hmm. uh, the only f area of concern or uh, renewed concern is one is of course, the area of trade deficit hmm. because there has been a rising uh, import of gold hmm. and of POL. Uh, petroleum and other lubricants hmm. uh, and that has counterbalanced to some extent the benefit that we were getting from a lower 
import ex, uh, export uh, export uh, lower prices of commodity i mean in the sense that the prices have gone down but there has been lar larger imports so mm. that has sort of widened the trade deficit mm. so that is a one fresh area of concern which mm -hmm. rbi is highlighting and the fourth one that's talking about is the fact that the seventh pay commission recommendation which i amir was talking about mm. uh, was that it's now going to be a new um challenge mm. in public policy in mm. terms of what will be the uh, multiplier effect mm. or as it plays out through the economy right. first of all will be the central government mm. and then going down what will be the state governments right. uh, how much do they take on mm. of the commission recommendations mm -hmm. so that is uh, the full what you might call the structure of mm. uh, issues that the policy document mm. today lays out mm -hmm. and and what just, about just to add to that um, do you think what would be the impact of the one rank one pension you know that's something that we are not discussing the second thing that is worrying me a little bit more is this whole discom this ujwal whatever ujwal, mm -hmm. because that what it is going to do is put a lot of pressure on the state deficit and what will happen the consolidated deficit will definitely go up rajan's talked about that already will it go will it also impact central funding how will that be factored in when we are Very doing the very interesting in fact in fact i mean if you look at it uh, yesterday on the rbi site itself there is a report that has been placed by the sumit bose committee mm, yes, on the ways and means advance of states yeah. now one of the things that it has recommended is that the ujwal the uday uh, effect should be spaced out over the next uh, couple of years mm -hmm. so it says that in the first year uh the, uh the 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 states should be allowed to uh, stay with the, i mean go in right. for oh, okay. balance their books by taking extra recourse right. and the ways and means restrictions the new uh, provision that should come in should step in after a one more gap so mm. so essentially mm. the, that committee is also saying as uh, that the, yeah. that the states would need more Some access time. to right. uh, rbi funds yes. the uh, larger ways and means advances to be able to handle the pressure of mm. the the balance the impact flowing right. through their balance sheet right, mm -hmm. right. and you wanted to come in here doctor yeah uh, look uh, the very first year say as on, as on today the four states have signed it mm. Mm. Uh, it is jharkhand it is chatisgarh uh, it is rajasthan and it is up yeah uh, now if i look at this particular this in this fiscal hmm. 20 uh, 2015 16 there will be no impact on deficit because it is the debt which will move from discom books and to will the, sit on state, right. state government mm -hmm. books hmm. the major impact if we look at the state frbm will be the increase in the debt limits because frbm always have the debt in relation to the state's own revenue or overall revenue mm -hmm. so that has to be relaxed point mm -hmm. number 1 mm -hmm. point number 2 the real impact on fiscal deficit of uday mm -hmm. is going to start from next, next fiscal right mm -hmm. and the right. fy 17 17, 17 right. because if as, as on 31st march something yeah, come on state right. government books they have to pay interest in next year right and for the states which have the larger discom debt hmm. state like rajasthan and rajasthan and, and all those yeah. hmm. the impact could be as high as even 25 to 30 basis point of the gdp hmm. of hmm. the gsdp yes, hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. right hmm. now if i look i am looking at three different power sector bailout Mm. state state electricity bailout of 2003 mm. whereby the state government issued power bonds which is still on the books of many of the state governments mm. and at that point of time because state electricity boards were ha, has to pay a lot of money to central power utilities like ntpc and nhpc mm -hmm. so they were bailed out at that point of time the second came in financial restructuring pa package of mm -hmm. 2012 mm -hmm. where some states came in Tamil Nadu was the first state hmm. with Tanjet co doing those bonds state government this is the only state government which uh, th they have taken on their books mm -hmm. but since they were carrying a high interest rate hmm. they went ahead and did sdl which is at around 8% or 8.5% hmm. this Tanjet co go government guaranteed bonds were around 9 and 1/2 and 10 hmm. and they repaid that so most of the investor in at least in Tanjet co bonds have got their money now in entire issue hmm. until unless the efficiency of the system improves hmm. 
Yeah, uh, we absolutely. can't yeah. have break even or profitable discount mm. with 25 to 30 percent ATNC losses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Until so unless those ATNC losses comes mm. down, mm. Yeah. we may see again a uh, uh, same situation. So uh, uh, I, you know what, uh, uh, this is a very, very critical point that you're raising, but I am slightly more hopeful this time. And the reason for that is uh, the RBI has allowed state governments to float their SDLs yeah. to foreign investors. It's of course just 5% as of now, but that cap is sure and certain going to rise in the next fiscal. Now, once that happens, those guys are definitely much less willing to take a cut, a haircut, and they would naturally expect the states to be much more a transparent, yeah, yeah. be much more efficient yeah. in how they handle their uh, SPVs, how they handle their subsidies, and so on and so forth. So, I would expect the pressure of the market itself to act as a salutary impact on the states to force them to come into the straight and narrow. So my, my apologies for no, taking no, this no, debate that, that's completely very relevant right. point you into raised. electricity. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Bhattacharji, you know, uh, the other concern, the other major expenditure that you also touched upon, that of the pay commission, the RBI governor said that has yet to be factored in. Uh, how much room does that leave for the government to follow its fiscal consolidation roadmap then? I would expect the fiscal, uh, the pay commission report to be staggered. Mm -hmm. uh, all indications are that they would not be taking on board the pay commission recommendation, the entire 1 lakh uh, crore mm -hmm. uh, at one go. Mm -hmm. uh, my sense is that possibly the pay part will be taken on initially. The allowances would come sep later on. Mm -hmm. It makes sense mm -hmm. also because this is not a particularly heavy election here mm -hmm. and the government can afford to face the flak. Okay. And so it'll stagger it out, mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 frankly speaking, given the fact that in a economy where everyone is being forced to take a haircut mm -hmm. uh, in the interregnum, we are talking about the NREGA. Mm -hmm. You know the fact that there's not let much money left there on the table for them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's only fair that the government employees are willing mm -hmm. and accept that they uh, their requirements for additional cash mm -hmm. should come after the more disadvantaged section of the society hmm. uh, get get the benefit. I mean, I think that is only fair. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, how, how does the government uh, meet its fiscal deficit target? Because that was something that we discussed at length uh, before going into the break, uh, that how it is going to be a, a mammoth task for the finance minister. Absolutely. And I am absolutely sure that the fiscal deficit targets for this year and for the next year hmm. will be taken on mm -hmm. for the simple reason that uh, we have moved from soft budget constraint to hard budget constraints. Mm. So, it is very difficult for a government mm. uh, of India, which is now very much in the limelight of international borrowing, uh, international rating agencies, uh, everybody tracking it. It will be very difficult for the government mm. to say that, hang on, uh, I do not have too much of a problem mm. and uh, there is no you know, what you call black swan event that has happened, mm. uh, yet I am not able to balance my book mm -hmm. and last year because whether I was too optimistic or whatever, so I am not able to really reach there. Mm. Uh, it will be very difficult for uh, for any government of, of India. Hmm. In fact, that's that's one of the very good things I think has come into the Indian uh, fiscal policy and fiscal management hmm. that they will have to stick to hmm. those numbers. Mm -hmm. um, I, and it will be and it will be really be difficult if you had to take a major change mm. uh, then that would have been fair enough but there is no major uh, problem in, in, in the Indian economy mm. where you can say that no instead of 3.9 this year I will go to 4.5 mm. or I will go to somewhere even uh, more harsh. Mm. I mean instead of 3.9 I will stick on to 4.1 or instead of 3.6 or 3.5 mm. I will stick on to 3.7. Mm. You know it simply shows bad marksmanship mm -hmm. and this is not something that the government will be comfortable with. Mm. It will face acute criticism. Mm. There will be a lot of problems from the bondholders. Mm -hmm. RBI itself has been warning that mm -hmm. look if you do this uh, sort of thing then the bond, the go those guys who are holding government of India papers mm. and it is not just domestic investors, it is foreign investors and that number is increasing. Uh, they will uh, sure as hell uh, next time make you pay more mm. in, in terms of interest. So, I, I do not think uh, the government will really, I mean it will really ensure that that will try to play around with the numbers. It mm. can do lots of stuff within the accounts. Mm. There is always enough room to mm. do, you know, defer expenditure, mm. play, bring some uh, front load, some receipts. But 
he'll do all that mm -hmm. uh there is a is a is a old uh, <laughs> i mean a tracker of this sort of thing and he'll be able to tell you lots of those stories but essentially i would expect mm -hmm. that the numbers would stay where they are mm -hmm. uh dr pan uh, another area of concern that the rbi governor mentioned was you know weak domestic private investment de demand um uh, you know everyone's looking to the government to you know boost public investment and this comes at a time when we are dis discussing government fiscal consolidation and so on uh do you think the government is in a position to keep keep spending more well not much mm -hmm. there is not much space there mm. uh but as we discussed earlier if some of those things like uh, the new uh, trai base price for sp spectrum hmm. which was not in picture till till maybe two weeks back mm -hmm. or a week back that suddenly gives you a lot of scope like base price 4.6 lakh crore aggressive hmm. uh, bidding by by the 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 operator mm -hmm. i think submois uh, newspaper have 6 lakh crore mm -hmm. somebody is talking about a 5 and a half lakh crore mm -hmm. now if it comes to 6 lakh crore mm -hmm. or let's say 4.6 lakh crore and it is not that they, uh, they the, the payment is made on the very first year it is staggered out for 3 4 years and say the 25% comes in very first year even at the base prices we are talking about a number of a lakh 15000 crores mm -hmm. and that will give lot of cushion that will give lot of cushion okay. some of the cushion some of the arithmetic which is being played around mm -hmm. with people saying 3 and a half will be met mm -hmm. is the kind of benefit we had seen in percentage form mm -hmm. from the commodity prices the oil coming down further from 20 uh, 28 dollar 35 cent which is the indian basket for the january hmm. if that goes down further it will be disaster for the global economy not only for indian economy mm -hmm. we are facing the consequence of continuous deflation hmm. it is low inflation hmm. is good but continuous deflation in hmm. the economy what is happening hmm. the major concern right now i'm sorry i'm uh, going slightly away mm -hmm. major concern right now is growth is happening at 7 and a half or 7.4% mm -hmm. but the corporate balance sheets are not showing that mm -hmm. what is happening the real growth which is a quantity measure that is growing mm -hmm. but since there is deflation mm -hmm. the nominal, nominal value is going down and down look at mm -hmm. the corporate balance sheets look at the company's results third quarter mm -hmm. results which are announced mm -hmm. you will see the profitability might mildly go going up hmm. slight increase in the profitability hmm. but if you look at the sales that is not growing that is going down hmm. and the same thing is being reflected hmm. there on the nominal gdp mm -hmm. so what suvuma so said it may be i will not take it as if 3.9 is not achieved hmm. i'll not lose sleep over it as long as 5 lakh 55000 crores of deficit target is not ballooned mm -hmm. if 5 lakh 55000 crore deficit is around that given a couple of thousand crore so basically you are not altering the debt debt market dynamics mm -hmm. you are not borrowing from the market mm -hmm. and mind you this is the time when there is corporate sector demand is tepid mm -hmm. and if next year and going after that mm -hmm. when the corporate sector demand will rise mm -hmm. increase then the high fiscal deficit will always create a problem for the government mm -hmm. so it's better to stick to the fiscal deficit yeah. targets yeah that's at right. the, at, right. the, at the at the at the <coughs> level term not mm -hmm. in percentage term mm -hmm. right dr khan you wanted yeah, to yeah what's here? going to be interesting also is mm -hmm. other factors uh two years of bad rains so does it mean that this year we should in all probability see a good rain year that is going to have a big mm -hmm. impact because mm -hmm. what's been happening over the last couple of years is poor rural demand so that is one factor if it is going to be another bad year of rains then that is going to be a tough thing to handle and mm -hmm. therefore what will happen is corporate uh, results will again show poor mm -hmm. uh, poor outcomes what we are uh, bargaining for in the next year will be a uh, an improvement at least in corporate returns for that again pressure mm -hmm. back on the finance minister will the finance minister be able to do something that the governor has been saying otherwise mm -hmm. which is go after the rich guys go after the big debtors mm. get them in line reduce mm. the npas improve banking mm. that will require some very tough measures 
the bankruptcy code therefore will be back in the focus can mm. the government push that law mm. this year the focus will again go back to gst we we've not forgotten that and nobody mm. has and that is going to be the government's big responsibility this year mm. if the finance minister again cannot take those steps and cannot get the parliament to pass that mm. he'll again he'll be on that on that back foot mm. construction sector again you know the importance of getting the construction law passed mm. so that there is some more activity there that's been a major sector that has been the cause of distress in urban india mm. so that is going to be the further issue that we are going to look at so it's it's a combination of factors mm -hmm. it will ha we will have to see some sharp growth in the agriculture sector this year mm -hmm. and we will have to see all these reform measures mm. the structural reform measures that we have been waiting for mm. now for 2 years to come into play it should be a better year Uh, mm. If if all these things happen, even if oil prices rebound, okay, uh, there it's unlikely they are going to go back to their heady levels mm. of a hundred and hundred and twenty dollars. Mm. So while there will be some impact on the oil bill, mm -hmm. we've uh, reduced rates so substantially that it should not impact the trade deficit so much. Mm. Finally, the the rupee where it stands should start showing up. in better export results you know the mm. the the uh, one of the anomalies of last year was that with the falling rupee mm. exports were falling too right and that was something that hurt us tremendously mm. this year at 67 68 or mm. or wherever the rupee goes to mm. we should see a rebound in exports and mm. therefore we should have a a, a more lenient uh, mm. issue as but far as but demand remains sluggish out outside what do we do about the, that yeah the external demand that's mm. why i'm not even talking about what's happening mm. in the rest of the world mm. uh, that is something that is going to be a be a complete externality mm. like like last year beyond our control but it is going to be very unlikely mm -hmm. for world demand to continue to be Okay. On the on the hmm. on the decreasing path through next year too. Okay, Doctor Panda, quick word. We're slipping into a yeah, break. Yeah, two, <coughs> two, two quick things hmm. to Amir <coughs> uh, or um, what Amir just said. Uh, rural demand. Hmm. The only thing we are we are uh, we know about uh, weather pattern in Pacific is from the Australian weather forecaster, mm -hmm. which says till second quarter of this calendar year, that is till June, hmm. neutral weather condition. Post that, it will be develop into a La Nina. which mm. is op opposite of alino so you will mm. have the good rain mm. point number 1 point number 2 the exports are facing the same situation of price collapse because if you look whatever data is available on the quantity terms in yeah. the quantity terms the growth is taking place right mm -hmm. but since the prices have collapsed so much mm. globally then you are not witnessing The, uh, the dollar values, in, yeah. In, in the yeah, yeah. Because the, right. the, what global happening? global trade is slowing down by twenty five percent year month yeah. month. And since and day. since our products have an inflation built in, since we are holding an inflation which is higher than the rest of the world, so we are automatically more expensive than rest of the world. And th yeah. that that is a structural mm. weakness in the Indian economy mm. which is ha uh, haunting us continuously. Right. right. Well, on, yeah. on that note, we take yet another break here in the program. Stay with us. We'll be back with the final segment of the show. Welcome back to Public Forum. We are discussing RBI's monetary policy review. Mr. Bharatiya, I'll continue with you. You know, an important point uh, Dr. Pant just mentioned that of you know global factors. How important are they going to be in the coming months, uh, given the fact that there's been a downward revision of growth projections, uh, global growth projections, both by the World Bank and the IMF. China see, has slowed down. Yes. Yeah, see, the problem is that um, he's absolutely right, and no country, unfortunately, can afford to grow mm -hmm. at any good rate unless you've got a good export engine happening. Mm -hmm. um, without export to expect a sustained growth rate happening and just to expect that it will be you know entirely demand driven from within the country is frankly very difficult to examine and also because india's per capita income is not that high mm. that can actually absorb the production that we are making to be able to make uh, to be able to keep our industries spreading mm -hmm. so we need uh, to export and the problem as uh, devinder pointed out 
is that in volume terms we are exporting, mm -hmm. but the price have collapsed across the world, which means the per unit export realization is low. Mm. And along with that uh, is the fact that we have got an inflation that we are carrying. Mm. So it makes it even more important to actually pull our inflation down okay. towards lower level the, so that, the, so that the, the, the inflation stays lower enough mm. to be able to give that advantage. Mm -hmm. Because despite the lower value of rupee, mm. uh, Amir was pointing out, our exports have not risen. Mm. So that is something that needs to be fixed. Okay. Um, there are lots of options, uh, but, but this needs to be sorted out first that the export volume mm. has to correspondingly give uh, bang because if it does not then what happens is export is also a very high employment uh, generating sector mm -hmm. and it also so a low export realization also hurts uh, corresponding down the line the purchasing power. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we need to sort out and we need to sort it out really fast and really soon. Mm -hmm. Okay so um, and l let us talk about inflationary uh, concerns as well. Uh, the RBI governor did say that it was well within its uh, you know target of 6% uh, but uh, uh, the food prices they have been uh, any area of concern for some time. Yeah and that is primarily because of the fact that uh, we have had one, two, three, this is now going to be the fourth mm. crop cycle mm. where we have had deficient rainfall. Mm. So, two Kharif and two Rabi mm -hmm. have actually gone without uh, good rains. Mm -hmm. So, it has been a consistently long period mm. of weak uh, production. Uh, that is definitely affecting uh, prices. Surprisingly, it is also affecting prices of those which are not dependent on rainfall. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our protein products, mm. meat products, mm. milk products. Mm these are not that dependent on rainfall, the prices of these have also risen. Yes. Now, the reason why they have risen is also because of the fact that we are continuously through various programs mm. pushing up the wage ability of the of, of different segments of the community. Mm -hmm. So, that is happening and that will continue to happen in India mm. and that once and since that is happening, so there is very little possibility of